Good morning, Josh the Driving Instructor here today and today we're going to look at Driving Instructor Essentials. What must we have as a driving instructor? And I'm making this because if you were where I was, where I didn't have a clue what I needed as a driving instructor, there was nothing around like this. So today you're going to have a look, there's going to be everything you need and I'm breaking it down into absolute essentials. Then we're going to look at what's nice to have and then we're going to look at just some basics, what suits me, but you don't actually need. As always, if this helps you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It is priority. And there is loads more content in the channel now that's well worth having a look at. And there is new content coming every single week. First, we're going to talk about what it is. Then we're going to talk about if there is a best and worst. And we're going to talk a little bit about price as well. So the first one we're looking at is a car. I'm sure we'll all agree as a driving instructor, you need a car. The question is, do you go for a new car, second hand car? Do you get a car on higher purchase, on PCP? There are so many options out there. If you want my advice, as I did, I would start off, if you're starting out as a driving instructor, I would start off with a second hand car, um, something nice and cheap, just to dip your toes in, not too cheap, but what I'm saying is you don't want to go out there and spend 30, 40,000 pounds on a new car when you don't know how much you're actually going to be working. Are you going to work four days, five days, six days? You don't know. And I did do that. I started having a go at seven days, then six days, then three days. So it's a case of finding the balance of how much you actually going to work because that's going to affect how much uh, you earn in the year, which is going to affect how much tax you need to pay. So how much of that car is going to be tax deductible. Now, what is the best and worst car? Well, you pretty much the world is your oyster as long as it's not a soft top. Most people will pick a hatchback um, just because the length of them and size of them, width of them is normally quite comfortable for a learner. There are some people starting to move away towards more the crossovers, which is the, the larger uh, hatchback, which Dave is not going to be happy about if you're watching this, Dave. It's really down to you. It's down to personal preference. You know, you're the one that's going to have to spend all this time in the car all day, every day. And I can promise there is a difference. You know, when I had that Corsa, when I was in that accident and I had that Corsa, I had a bad back for the whole of the three weeks that I was using that car. And I didn't know it was the car. I thought it was just, I'm having a bad back time. But the second I got back into my car, which looks exactly the same, guess what? Bad back went away. So I'm realizing that I actually need something slightly higher now. So when I buy a new car in the future, I will be making sure that I have got something a little bit higher. Uh, I, you do even see some people in these four by fours now doing driving lessons so it really is down to you what works for you and you are going to have to spend this time in there but these are things to consider what is your opinion on the car situation get a comment below what car have you got or what car are you going with um, and why next dual controls again i would say that no one is going to argue that dual controls is an essential uh first of all it's going to affect your insurance to your driving school insurance they're going to want you to have dual controls ideal world and also your sanity you know i remember trying to do a lesson without dual controls uh, back in the day the very first one i haven't forgotten it even though it was so long ago because i remember how scary it was losing the fact that you are no longer in control so you do need dual controls best and worst well I'm no dual control expert, but I know of two types of dual controls. You've got one where when you press the clutch down, both clutches go down together, or you've got the other type of dual controls where where you press the clutch down, just your clutch goes down and their clutch stays up. Ideal world, you're going to want that type of dual controls where just the one clutch goes down, not both. Reason being, when you get to that roundabout um, at the traffic lights on a hill and your student inevitably stalls the car, you go to put the clutch down to try and save them just because of the situation. Then you ask them to take back over and they can't find the clutch. They're pressing, they're pressing clutches down, but they can't find the clutch. Um, and this inevitably causes a bit of a drama. So ideal world, you want to make sure you get the, the, the pedals where they have individual pedals going down. These may cost a little bit more, but they are worth it. Not world ending at all. I don't have those pedals. I have the ones where when you press one clutch down, the other goes down as well. 
and I'm not prepared to swap it in this car. When I get a new car, I will move across the other paddles. Cost-wise, they can vary. You can get them secondhand, or refurbished on eBay from £70. Um, you would need to then pay to get these fitted and they go all the way up to about £500. My advice is just phone someone that fits the paddles. They will supply the paddles and fit them as well in the price. Um, this way you're also covered for your guarantee as well, which, you know, is kind of important in the job that you're in. If you're struggling with where to get these done, you can either comment below, let me know, and I can help you get in touch with someone local in your area. The next absolutely must have is your stick on mirror. Okay, this is an absolute essential um, because not being able to see behind you, pretty darn scary when uh, you're driving with someone that essentially can't yet drive. So is there any difference? Well, when I started, this is the, the, the baby I started with. I think I bought it from Halfords, about eight quid. Did the job absolutely perfectly. And then one fateful day, I taught a learner called Morgan and she showed me this bad boy, which compared to this one, you know, really disappointed me. And, you know, most of the time size doesn't always matter. But in this case, I think it does. And I soon realized I needed to get Morgan past really quick so I could blag her mirror off of her. And that's exactly what I did. So, yes. So there is a slight difference in mirrors. Um, this was slightly longer, which is ideal because when you stick it on the side of the windscreen, it's it's difficult to see the whole of the back windscreen, so I just prefer having a slightly longer mirror. It's also easier to move around than the other one, believe it or not. But yes, must have essential. The next must have essential is a diary. The question is, which direction do you go? Do you go with a paperback diary? Nice handheld, no need for tech, no need for posh mobile phones, or do you go for the digi diary? Both have the pros and cons. Handheld diary, Nothing beats holding a pencil and your diary and having your whole life there in front of you. Um, can't be lost, easy to write, any extra appointments, not just your driving instructor appointments. Um, if it works for you, then perfect. You do need to get a new one every year and it's anywhere between 10 and 30 pounds, depending on how pretty you want it to look. Or you can use something digital such as Google Calendars or there's a million diary apps out there. Uh, Google Calendar is completely free. Just find something free if you prefer. Can go on your mobile phone. You aren't going to lose it. I mean, you might lose it, but it's, you know, I'm less likely to lose this than I am a diary. Uh, so it's really what works for you. Or you can go all singing, all dancing, get a driving instructor app that does all singing, all dancing. It does just about everything apart from actually teach the student for you. So it really depends on where you want to go or where you want to start. As I said, they all have pros and cons. Uh, the diary. You can lose a diary if it's handheld. You also have to buy a new one every year. Google app, if you make a mistake, it's very easy to make a mistake in there and for an appointment to disappear or something along those lines. So you've got to be particularly careful. And then the app, the driving instructor app, it does cost, it does come with a cost of anywhere between three and say 12 pounds per month, depending on which app you've got. So there are pros and there are cons to each of those. Me personally, when I started, I started with a handheld diary um, just because my wife's in another profession where she needed a, a diary. So I thought I'll go with that. Unfortunately, being the sort of person that couldn't organize a PIP in a brewery, after leaving my diary at home a few times, I realized that was not for me. So I moved on to, as I said, the Google calendars, some sort of app. Um, Google Calendars was far better because I could sync up my diary with my wife, which means we could live view the diary um, and I could put my appointments in there. Far harder to lose them. Um, it works really well. I like doing things like that with my phone. I'm pretty tech savvy like that. After about six months of using the digital um, diary using Google Calendars, I took some for a driving test in Wolverhampton, off territory actually, um, for whatever reason. And um, I met a guy from DGN who actually showed me a app called Total Drive, which is one of the, the driving, it's not the only one out there, there's plenty of them out there. Um, he showed me an app called Total Drive and I had 40 minutes spare, so he was talking me through the benefits. Being an absolute cheapskate, my biggest concern with it was I was having to pay £10 per month, which I really wasn't over the moon about, but it was free for the first month. So I thought, what the hell, we'll have a go. So I used it for about two days and realized my world had changed for the better and I was well prepared to pay that £10 per month, especially as, as it was tax deductible anyway. And it just took all of the stress out of all of my driving instructing. Um, it literally took all the paperwork away. It had the progress, the CPD, it has 
the diary management, they're reminding students about their lessons. That it just takes all the excuses away. So for me, I've never looked back. Um, that is absolutely free if you want to have a look. There's a few different ones out there. Um, Total Drive, for instance, is free for the first month. I haven't looked at the other ones in too much detail because as I say, you've got to pay monthly. So you've just got to find one that you like. Um, if you are a, a PDI, Total Drive is completely free until you qualify. So that might be worth having a look at. It's whatever works for you. How do you currently record your students? You know, are you training to become a driving instructor? Do you use a hardback diary? Um, do you use a digital diary? What is it? How are you actually recording your appointments? Maybe you're already a driving instructor. Share below in the comments. I'd love to know how you're actually managing your own diary. Okay, next on the absolutely essentials is the L plates. Okay, and you wouldn't think there's any difference in L plates, but there actually is. There's a difference between them blowing off the car and not blowing off the car. So this one, they are fully magnetic, first of all. Uh, Thickness-wise, this is quite a thick one, okay? And for whatever reason, I don't know if that makes them more magnetic, but these haven't yet touched wood blown off the car, and I've had them for about a year. So if you're buying L plates, I would spend the money and get the thicker, full magnetic ones to go on the car. This way, there's less chance of them blowing off. Um, you can get them from Halfords, Amazon, you name it. Um, you can get them, but I wouldn't get the partially magnetic top and bottom strips, and I wouldn't get the thicker ones. There are some exceptions, and the exceptions are um, when I had that Corsa, don't ask me why, but the bonnet wasn't magnetic, so I couldn't stick an L plate on there, so I just didn't bother because I had a roof box. Sometimes you get the boots where they're so curved that you can't actually stick a L plate on um, comfortably on the back, so sometimes you have to stick them in the back window, which isn't ideal, but what else can you do? If you do stick your L plate on the front, try and make sure it's on the center of the bonnet or that you have two, one on either side. Uh, one, it's far easier for other cars to identify and two, it's what the examiner is going to expect and be looking for. Final absolutely essential for me is to have a basic first aid kit, you know, and, and reason being, you are out on the road, you're going to be out on the road an awful lot, okay? And I'm not saying anything's going to happen to you or your student, but you could just arrive, you could be the first on the scene of something happening out there on the road, an accident or whatever else. And I'm not suggesting that you're gonna start doing CPR or anything else, but it's still good to have that first aid kit and say, I've got a first aid kit. Is it gonna be of any use? Um, it's just something you should have when you're out on the road that much, it's just sensible. Next, we're going to have a look at helpful, okay? These are things that I think they're really helpful as a driving instructor, but strictly not essential. So, first of all, we've got blind spot mirrors. Now for me, these were an absolute bargain buy and the, one of the best buys I made. Uh, they are about 10 pounds from Halfords at the time. They stick on in the corner of the mirror the, the only time they're used is when a student does maneuvers. Any maneuver where it involves reversing, that's the only time because they're so easy to judge your parking to see the lines when there's not a car on either side. You know, so it's really, really useful. And then most of my students have actually bought a set after using them in my car for their own car just because they're so beneficial. Now, as I say, I bought these for about £8, but I have recently seen them in Aldi good old Aldi, for $2.99. So well worth getting yourself a set if you're training to become a driving instructor or not. Next, we're having a quick look at the sat-nav, okay? Now, this particular one, I've, I've just got a TomTom -tom here. The reason I've got this, I spent around £100 on this. It's the, I can't remember, it's the 522, I think it was, from Halfords. It was around £100. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of sat-navs at all. And to be honest with you, I'll use this and Google Maps for anywhere where I actually need to go and, and get there quickly because Google Maps is, stays up to date, gives you live traffic information free of charge. I can do that safely, hands-free, um, exactly the same as a sat-nav, whereas a TomTom -tom want you to pay monthly for live traffic. So uh, the only reason I have this um, there's two main reasons, two main key selling points. Uh, the first is it's very similar to, if not exactly the same as the one that the examiners use. So when I'm teaching students how to use a sat nav, it's very similar to what they're going to get on their, their actual real test. Uh, that's the first reason. Second reason is you can actually record routes, press record, and you can transfer routes from other people. Um, now, this is useful if I'm trying to teach students to use a sat nav and I've got a particular route I like to take them on, I can record it, and rather than just having to type in a postcode and take them on there repeatedly uh, to teach them to use sat -nav. So really beneficial in that respect, but that's all I use it for. If I wasn't a driving instructor, there's no way I'd be using a sat nav um, for hundred pounds when you've got a mobile phone anyway that's got Google Maps on. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is the roof sign on the car. Okay, and these range from around hundred pounds upwards. Um, 
and basically you just contact the, the company and you specify what number you'd like to go on it, what um, stickers you'd like to go up on it and they'll just sort all of that out for you. I've had this for about two years. As for best and worst, well, as you can see, mine's, mine wasn't actually this yellow before. It was actually the same color as this sticker. So you want to try and find one that's got this acrylic sun protection, really an, an anti-yellow. Um, if you want a roof sign, are they essential? They're not essential, and I put it under not essential because there's a number of driving schools out there that don't use roof signs at all. Uh, instead, they've got the car plastered all the way around and they look quite good, I think. Far better and prettier than a yellow roof sign. Um, although the black roof signs don't look too bad. Uh, what about these for advertising? Well, it's got my number on, but that's about it. So advertising wise, I wouldn't say it's amazing at all. I don't think it's particularly pretty, but the big L's on it do clearly indicate you are a driving school. So, handy in that respect now they range from around 100 pounds this one has lasted me about two years um they are magnetic i've never had a problem with it on the car at all the problems i have had is this rubber strip comes off here so i've had to actually uh, silica it on to keep it on there so keep an eye on that i've super glued it there as well and as i say it's gone very yellow so the best way i would counteract this is by getting one of the new black ones would I say it's an essential? Well, for advertising purposes, no, but for learning purposes, I would say it is. Reason being, as a driving instructor once pointed out to me, when you're in a row of traffic and you're the front car on a hill and your student inevitably uh, stalls at the traffic lights, the first two cars behind you can see the L on the back of the car clearly, which is absolutely fine. But that row of traffic, five, six cars down, they can't see anything if you don't have a roof box. They're gonna get frustrated, start beeping the horn, potentially causing more aggro for you and your learner, um, just because they can't see. Whereas when you have a roof box on your car, everyone in the vicinity can see you're a learner and they're far more likely to give you some breathing space. So if you want my advice, get yourself a roof box, even though it's not pretty. Next one I wanted to talk to you about are car mats, okay? So these are just the little back ones. Um, you have to excuse them being wet, pouring down with rain. Got a nice, pretty carpet one here. So I bought a set of these. These, these are Michelin, uh, these mats, 40 pounds from Halfords. Um, as you can see, this lasted about 12 months. They've got, they're getting holes in, you know? Not good with the carpet and whatnot, but they're a pain in the backside to have to vacuum clean, especially when you're going for a test and you really need to get in there, get it nice and clean. Um, then I bought these, guess where I bought these from? I bought these from Aldi. These are only the small back ones. I have got some large front ones. Wet, as you can see, give them a shake. The water comes off, really hard wearing. Okay, and in the climate where we need to make sure everything is absolutely spotless, these are absolutely ideal. Okay, not as pretty, but ideal. I can take them to the hose pipe, give them a spray. As you can see, these are nice and clean. They seem to slide round a bit less as well. Uh, for me, these are the ones to go with, but it's whatever you fancy. It's just less cleaning for me. And uh, they also seem to slide around less on the floor. These were 20 pound, those were 40 pound. Up to you. Okay, next nice to have is actually a dash cam. And this is actually a next base dash cam that again, I bought from Halfords, um, just because I'm not a car expert. And I asked other driving instructors and this is what they advised. It's done the job, it's been great. It's really useful for a number of reasons. One, I had a car accident and it identified, you know, it showed proof straight away of what happened. So absolutely brilliant for that. Two, if a student does a driving test and they swear blindly they didn't do something or they don't know why they failed, then we can go back on the dash cam and have a look at it and, and identify that for them to help them learn from the mistakes. It's just a really useful tool to have. Or if you're on a driving lesson with a student and then you're going around and they make some sort of mistake, but you can't stop there safely and talk about it, then you can, at least you can stop the car, show them the dash cam if need be, so they actually know what you're talking about. Okay, so again, around 120 pound, I paid 50 pound at Halfords for them to fit it as well, because there was no way I was getting a wire from the front of the car to the back of the car for the rear dash cam. Uh, so yeah, so it was well worth the money for that. And again, it's tax deductible. Nothing wrong with it. Lasts, it records over itself. Um, it's got the anti, it's got the parking sensor. So if someone bumps my car when I'm inside or whatever, it will record. It will, it does have a little bit of back, backup battery that it will turn on and record. Um, it records for about three minutes. That's depending on your SD card. One negative on it is for whatever reason, the power button is pressed in it's died um luckily it still works i just you can't press the power button so simple as that really um not that i need to 
Okay, next we are moving on to nice to have. These things are not essential. That They are not even part of the helpful. They're just nice to have for me. And my first really important one is Bluetooth. Okay, I've got Bluetooth in the car and I, I, I'd struggle to be a driving instructor without it. I'd have to find an alternative um, because I listen to, I'm on the road a lot. So I listen to audiobooks, I listen to um, podcasts, you know, I listen to all sorts, anything that's not the radio, because uh, that bores the, the hell out of me. So uh, yeah, so Bluetooth for me is an absolute must. The next is my coffee cup. Again, absolutely essential. Keeps my coffee warm for two hours. It's dented, it's bruised. It's the present that just keeps on giving. So if you're anything like me and you live on the coffee, this is the best tool you can have. This might sound ridiculous, especially in the middle of winter, but it's not. Sunglasses, okay? Sunglasses are really, really useful, um, even in winter time, because the glare, when the sun's really low, it, as, as you know, if you're driving around, it shines off the road, especially when the road's soaking wet, and it's completely blinding. So having the glasses, it just takes the glare off. I try not wear them when I'm around students too much, because I don't think uh, it's particularly nice for them. You trying to drive around like a cool dude with your sunglasses on, and they're trying to drive around blinded by the sun. So yeah, um, but very useful to have all the same. And again, really useful to have in the summer. My next nice to have is a lunchbox. You can get a lunchbox anywhere, can't you? And the reason I'm putting that on there, the lunchbox, yes, I could buy lunch um, and it's tax deductible every single day from wherever I like um, because I'm not working in the same location. However, I am going to end up severely overweight if I continue to do, to do this. So I've actually started instead having a salad or sandwiches from home to try and counteract this, especially with a lack of exercise with driving around all day. Next, we have a trusty umbrella and you're thinking, well, Josh, you're driving around all day. Why would you need an umbrella? And the, the answer is when you take someone for a driving test, especially if the doors are locked for whatever reason, uh, I need an umbrella and I need a trusty coat. And you'll see me a lot more in this, especially in the winter, uh, because it hasn't got the arms and I, I hate to say it, but it keeps me warm, especially in the car as well, without getting clammy. Um, because it hasn't got the arms. So definitely get yourself a trusty coat and a trusty umbrella. You've got to have an emergency, trust me. Okay, next one is actually seat covers, okay? And you might not need these. If you've got leather seats, you aren't going to need seat covers, all right? But I haven't got leather seats. I've got material seats. Um, and there's no nice way to say this, but people get sweaty when they're learning to drive because it's quite a stressful situation. Um, so yeah, so they do just get sweaty. So when you get back in, and your back's soaking wet because the seat's soaked through with sweat. It's not very nice. So getting these leather covers, uh, they don't look great. You know, they fold over and whatever. But in this current climate where you need to wipe down everything anyway, they're really easy to wipe down. They don't get sweaty. They're also protecting my seats. So when I do come to sell the car, I'm not going to have to pay to get the seats cleaned, uh, which is actually ideal. They do have some pockets at the front and the back as well. So handy. Guess where I got these from? You guessed it, Aldi. I think those are £20, actually. I think they're around £19.99. That is it from me, boys and girls, ladies and gents. If this has helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe. There is loads of content in the channel, and I will see you all very soon. Don't forget to join the Discord.